Hello everyone, back to today's second video on the five-day forecast. You can find the chat here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page and it's underneath the uh, link ads. There's also the written version. You get to that from the buttons at the top of the page. It's going to be an unsettled five days coming up. There'll be showers, longer spells, rain, of course, a real deluge. Uh, going on today so um i'll let you check out five day forecast and see for yourself what's happening that's where we're going to start with today's second video we're looking at up the next week to 10 days and also basically climate center the next 40 days in today's video we're going to start with today's rain very wet across england and wales a band of really heavy and persistent rain has set up it's a wall of rain really across uh, many central southern parts of england where stretch out from the southwest up through the midlands into eastern parts of wales and then going up into northern england as well it's not too bad across scotland northern island northwest england we have got a few heavy showers now breaking out across northern Ireland. and you notice the very far southeast is uh, just about hanging on to dry weather to the east of East Anglia and down into southeastern England. Quite warm there as well and humid. As this rain pushes eastwards into that warmth and humidity, it may well develop into thundery uh, rain. So we could get some torrential rain going up later this afternoon into this evening across eastern and southeastern parts of the country. Now, that's not enough. A lovely little area of low pressure has uh, crept up on us. It's this one just here. This is the GFS chart for tomorrow. This one just here coming out of uh, France at 6 o'clock in the evening tomorrow. Looks like that's going to clip the far southeastern uh, side of the country overnight Thursday and into Friday. Got another pulse of very heavy rain. Notice really heavy rain coming up through France, 6 o'clock in the evening tomorrow. And that does get into the southeast actually overnight uh, Thursday into Friday. So it's pushing into East Anglia, southeastern England, and then running up the east coast. And quite uh, dark colours in there again, indicating. Uh, so really quite heavy rain into the southeast tomorrow night and into Friday morning. That runs up the eastern coast. It's very difficult to ascertain the western extent of this rain uh, at this stage. The uh, high resolution Euro 4 uh, model, which is the UK Met Office product, um, that, uh, that uh, isn't bringing it as far inland as the GFS. So it really is restricting it just the far east of East Anglia and down into the far southeast a few showers perhaps breaking out through parts of the East Midlands uh, there at 6 o'clock in the morning. This is the precipitation forecast for 6 o'clock in the, in the morning. They might, on Friday, they might be a little bit uh, thundery. But it is restricting that rain more to the far southeast compared to uh, the GFS, which actually brings it quite a long way inland. We've got to wait and see on that. We'll know more tomorrow, I think, exactly how far inland this band of rain came. But certainly for East Anglia, South East England, it looks like after today's deluge, you'll get more heavy rain uh, overnight Thursday and into Friday. Well, let's have a look at the Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation next. And uh, this is the Arctic Oscillation of the observed and forecast chart. The black line here tells us where we've been uh, with the Arctic Oscillation. The red line's at the end where the GFS Ensemble's forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Remember, this is just an index that's reflective of the state of the atmosphere over the North Pole. It doesn't drive anything. It just tells you what the atmosphere is doing. So to around uh, April, start of April just there, we find that the Arctic Oscillation was generally positive. And that's the case going right way back into the start of the winter. Since around the middle of April, just here, we've actually gone negative. We've been trending from the start of April, really, down into negative Arctic Oscillation condition. We reached that sort of level in the first week of May, very negative Arctic Oscillation. We've increased the Arctic Oscillation a little bit. We've gone back towards neutral. We may actually go a little bit positive in the next couple of days. But then the trend is to go negative. Again, it does look now as though we have moved into a long-term sort of trend of negativity of the Arctic Oscillation. These indexes, the AO and the NAO, tend to move in blocks of around three or four months. So it looks like we have gone into quite a pronounced and prolonged period of negativity. This might have another month or two to go, which takes us into the start of the summer of course, and that uh, tells us we've got a negative Arctic Oscillation. It tells us we've got high pressure over the pole. We've got blocking. And essentially what happens is that low pressure forms underneath it. And in summer, uh, high pressure, negative 
NaO uh, and a negative AO, they tend to coincide with cool and unsettled summer conditions. It's the same story for the NaO again. This is the observed and uh, forecast chart. Black line here tells us where we've been. Red line's where the GFS samples are forecasting the NA NAO to go. Generally positive with the NAO, again, going back into the winter, but since April, we've gradually been trending down. Well, it took a little bit longer than the Arctic Oscillation for the North Atlantic Oscillation to go negative, but it did go negative, it has gone negative, through the course of May, and the GFS ensemble is forecasting us to stay generally in negative territory with the NAO. So it doesn't look like the second half of May, in terms of the indexes, NAO and the AO, it doesn't look as though we're going to see all that much change, which means we're likely to keep high pressure up over the pole. That's likely to be a more unsettled and cooler signal as we're going through the second half of May. These are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks. So red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average. We are still, this is for London, we are still quite, uh, quite warm in the far southeast uh, right now. But we're going to be cooling off and it's going to be going a little bit cooler than average actually through the second half of this week and into the weekend. Next week it looks like we'll be very close to average, maybe going a little bit uh, warmer at times, but not a great deviation. And in terms of uh, precipitation, well, here's today's heavy rain. And then this is the heavy rain uh, for the southeast that uh, is going to be clipping in overnight Thursday and into Friday. And you'll notice that actually for the southeastern part of the country, I say this is beyond Solomon for London, for the southeast part of the, uh, of the country, it's actually a little bit wetter overnight Thursday into Friday than it is today. And that's because in the far southeast, you're just outside of that uh, rain band that's set up through the central swathe of the country. But this is another really quite significant uh, dose of rain that looks like it's clipping into the far southeast overnight Thursday into Friday. Ignore that gold uh, spike just there. That is a very wet ensemble member, and it's uh, almost certainly is over the top but it does look as though it's going to be really quite wet again overnight Thursday to uh, Friday after that keeping it showery really through the remainder of the period it does look as though we've entered a cooler and more unsettled phase of weather generally uh, now this is the temperature anomaly for the next week this is going from the 17th to 25th of May coming out a little bit cooler than average and in terms of precipitation again this is the anomaly from the 17th to 25th of May that's coming out wetter than average particularly so for England and Wales and particularly so and usually so perhaps for the southeastern part of the country here's how the GFS is looking for Sunday then now it might be on a little bit of a ridge to the southwest that was a uh, transient on Sunday but this low pressure is still bringing showers to the north I think Sunday could be a slightly drier and finer day. We tried to make a bit more of that ridge to the east of us on Monday, but low pressure is waiting in winds looking rather ominous, and then that starts to move in as we go through into the middle part of next week. Low pressure is coming in, and it looks as though that's pretty showery, especially so for the north, but all places could get showers with that. The second half of next week takes that low pressure over to the eastern side of the country, pulls winds back in from the north again. And uh, then we head up towards the Bank Cody weekend, and it still looks pretty unsettled, especially so for the south of these areas of low pressure, probably bringing uh, some outbreaks of rain into southern counties as we're starting the Bank Cody weekend. By the way, the third update for the Bank Cody uh, weekend will be released tonight around 7 o'clock. This is the uh, ECMWF. Again, a little bit of a transient ridge there for uh, Sunday. That perhaps lasting a little bit stronger on Monday, actually. We have got all, this air, all these areas of low pressure in the Atlantic, but uh, this is quite a ridge that's building here for the start of next week with the ECMWF. It might be um, going a bit over top with that. However, the signal is uh, still unsettled, so we go to the middle of next week and we're back under low pressure. So although the ECM does make a little bit more of that ridge on Sunday and Monday, it doesn't last all that long. It's back to low pressure by the middle of next week, which brings further showers, if not longer spells of rain. 
And then we run up to the bank holiday weekend, which is Friday 26th of May, where we bring down quite a cold northerly wind once again. We finish up on day 10 with a bit of a ridge extending down from the northwest. So that could actually be settling things down a little bit for uh, the start of the bank holiday weekend. So it looks like the bank holiday uh, weather is still a little bit up for grabs about what's going to happen there. Third update coming up this evening. Finally, just have a look at Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. So these are 500 meters of our heights broken down to 10-day periods. The first 10-day period takes us from uh, the 16th through 25th of May. This is all rather odd because it's showing quite a big ridge here uh, to the south and to the east of the country with low pressure up to the northwest, which you would assume is forcing the jet stream northward. So you would look at that and think it's going to be quite a warm, settled 10 days coming up. I'm not sure quite what it's doing with that and if you saw yesterday's video you'll know that the CFS for the next week also suggested quite a lot of high pressure around which we're just not really seeing uh, within the shorter range uh, models, GFS and the ECNUS. So quite what these uh, these long-range models are picking up on in the next week or so, um, a little bit uh, uncertain. Now we go through to the next 10-day period, which takes us from the 26th of May to the 4th of July. We find that ridge is weakening, so this is turning probably a little bit more unsettled, probably bringing the jet stream back, uh, a few showery bursts coming in from the Atlantic. The next 10-day period taking us from the 5th to the 14th of June has a trough in the Atlantic, a ridge down to uh, the south southeast of the country again. So we're doing something like that with the jet stream. Probably showery for the north and west and a fair amount of dry, pretty warm weather in the south and the east. And then we finish up, look at this, the final 10-day period takes us from the 15th through to the 24th of June. And we're building height strongly across not just the UK, but many parts of Europe as well. That is probably our first real burst of summer heat coming up there in the second half of June. If that came off, you would definitely be expecting temperatures to be rising into the mid to upper 20s Celsius. Uh, so quite hot, and it will also be pretty dry as well. But this is a strange update again from the Beijing Climate Centre, just as yesterday's update from the CFS was quite strange because I'm not sure what they're picking up on for the next week to 10 days. We did see with the GFS and the ECM that around Sunday and Monday we are likely to build a little bit of a ridge uh, close to the country. Uh, but it looks like that's got rid of quite quickly in the Atlantic just brushes it aside. Now, it's possible that that ridge is actually going to turn out to be a lot stronger, perhaps, than these shorter-range models are suggesting. If that is the case, then you'll have to say hats off to the uh, CFS of the Bayesian Climate Centre for seeing that stronger ridge break us out of the unsettled phase earlier than the shorter range models. But at this stage, it looks as though we're keeping it unsettled into the second half of May. That's certainly the way the shorter range models are going. Showery conditions lasting into the uh, second half of May. They may be going towards high pressure into uh, June, but that is very speculative. For the time being, all eyes on today's rain. Remember, we could have anything up to 20 to 40 millimetres of rain across some eastern and central parts of the country. That's around an inch, an inch and a half. It will uh, produce hazardous driving conditions uh, because it's been dry for so long. So uh, the roads are going to be a bit greasy. Do take care if you're found about on the roads this afternoon or this evening. And then another pulse of very wet weather clipping into the southeast, probably tomorrow night into Friday morning. Right, that's all for now. We'll be looking at the uh, Bank Holiday Weekend for the third time uh, this evening around 7 o'clock. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.